What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting. Today we're going to be testing out a couple of stencils I have been working on. I haven't really put them to use yet, but we're going to be doing that today. I don't have an exact color pattern or exact like name for this pattern that we're going to be doing other than I'm just testing the stencils. Assuming they work good, I will have the links to them and the blank we're using today both in the description below. The blank is a two and three quarter inch lipless shad from Barlow's Tackle. So if you want to get yourself some of those, they will be linked down in the description as well. The giveaway for this video is going to be a couple of the blanks and the stencils. All you have to do to enter to win is comment below. I, I want to know what you guys are more interested in as far as stencils or blanks go. So just comment below what kind of stencils you want to see or what kind of patterns or blanks you want to see used if you're more into swim baits or crank baits or top water. Comment that below, you're entered to win. The winner to the last giveaway will be posted right here. So if you could shoot me a email or a DM on Instagram, I'll get the giveaway from the last video shipped out to you this week. Let's not waste any more time talking and we'll jump into painting this bait. For the paint scheme, we're going to be keeping it semi-transparent. So we're not going to be doing a base coat of white. Instead, we will be starting off with a transparent sand. I'm going to do a couple of coats on it, probably just two. I'm not gonna do any more than that because I still want it to be see-through just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to hit that with the hairdryer really quick and we'll do a second coat. Got the first color of paint is done. I'm gonna clean out the airbrush and we'll move on to our second color, which is going to be a pearlized satin gold. And for this color, we're going to be keeping it right up on the top half of the bait here. I'm not gonna go past the center line. So we'll spray up here above and fade it just a little bit, but we're not gonna go all the way down to that fin. And I'm also going to hit up on the gill plate and around the eye. Now I'm not going to be turning it a solid gold up on top there. We're going to just keep all these colors kind of mixing together nicely. So again, not spraying it super heavy till the top turns solid gold. We're just gonna spray it so it gets a nice dusting on there and then fade it into that tan on the bottom. And that's all we're going to be doing with that. Again, I don't think on camera, it's gonna look like a whole lot's happening there. But I don't know if you can see with the light hitting it where that gold is. Uh, still very, very light colors. That's one thing I'm trying to get better about is I always do super solid, dark, opaque colors. And I'm trying to, trying to keep it more of a natural color. Uh, so really gentle gold faded into that sand. Going to clean out the airbrush and then we'll move on to the next color. Next color we're going to be using is a pearl lime color. I'm going, and I'm going to be doing the same thing we just do with the gold. So we're gonna start it at the top and then fade it into the gold. This is just an added color. We're not trying to make it solid green, but whenever the bait's moving in the light, I want you to see the gold and the green kind of shifting together. So with this green, we're not going to be spraying solid on the gill plate. I just really want to stay up here on the back and then fade a little bit into that gold. I'm keeping it off of the gill plate as much as I can. Of course, there's gonna be some overspray, but I want that gill plate to stay more of a gold rather than having that green on there. I got that on there pretty heavy. Uh, so we're gonna hit it with the hairdryer and then I'll see once it's not as shiny if there's any spots that I missed. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more up here on the back because we're gonna keep this bait pretty light, like I said, in colors. Because uh, one of the last colors we're going to be using is black. I still want the green to be prominent in the pattern. So I'm gonna hit it just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna call it good there before we end up with a green bait with a hint of gold. Okay, next color up is also going to be pearlized and it is the pearl tangerine. I'm going to be doing this up on the gill plate right in here and on the front of the mouth. And I always like whenever I do that to add just a little splash of the color on the end of the bait down here. 
So that'll be the three spots we're going to be doing with this. Again, trying to keep all of the colors really light. Still had some water left over in the airbrush, so that's why that looks a little bit runny. Yeah, uh, I am going to go ahead and hair dry the front part of this. And then we're going to flip the bait over and then going to hit the bottom of it right in here. Not a lot, just a little bit. And I think that's all it's gonna take. Just a little hint of that color. So you see it up on the front by the eyes. And it fades into that tan in the middle there, and then orange back on the tail. Going to hair dry this and then uh, clean out the airbrush, and we'll switch to our last color and actually utilize the stencil. Stencil wise, we have this nice textured pattern. So I think we'll use that last. But prior to that, I got two different sets of stripes here. Uh, I already know this one I'm gonna need to change. I got it cut a little bit too close there, so it's really flimsy. Uh, so I'll have that corrected if this looks good. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and use this one. I want to see how well that detail transfers over to the bait. I have a couple different ideas color-wise and what I want to do. I think we're going to keep this really simple and just use black for both of these stencils. So I'm going to lay down the vertical stripes first, and we're just going to do a real light spray with the black. I'm not going to go solid black with it. That way we can layer the texture pattern on top of it and they'll kind of be separated from each other. I've got my transparent black. I'm gonna load that up in the airbrush and then I think we're just going to hold this up here. I might take one of these guys and kind of clamp, clamp it to that top eyelet there to help hold it in place. The thing I do like with this, it's like a thick cardboard material is what I'm using. Uh, it'll kind of bend a little bit. So it kind of match the shape of the bait. So give her a little bit of a bend there and then see. I think that'll work just fine. We'll just kind of hold these fingers down here and then give it a nice little spray. I went ahead and grabbed or clamped the back half to that back eyelid as well. So I got two different points that are holding it in place there, which frees up my fingers just a little bit to help keep the pattern pushed down on the bait. And like I said, not going solid black here, just going to add a nice little dusting on there. We got a little bit more depth on the pattern. I'm going to attempt, take a little peek and see if that's what I was imagining. Yes, okay, let's pop this off there. There you go, nice little vertical stripes on there. So I'm going to hair dry that in case my fingers touch the backside of the bait. Won't smudge anything. Ooh, almost lost it there. And then we'll do this on the other side. This might have also looked cool if I did this black in a green instead of black. Uh, but you guys let me know what pattern you think you could use these for. Flip this over, I clamp the top half of it and the back half. Might have got that a little bit darker down here than I intended, but that's okay. Yeah, so definitely there's a huge difference. Oh, I'm gonna put that back on there. Huge difference on how a solid black looks versus a light spray. Uh, which that actually looks kind of cool too. Kind of getting a little bit of fire tiger vibes from that. What I was trying to do, <laughs> didn't want it that dark, but that is okay. Now you guys can see what it looks like both ways. Okay, going to hair dry this really fast and then we're going to use the textured stencil right over top of this one. And really I think this could be a finished bait like that, minus the eyes of course, but we're gonna see what this other one looks like on top of it. Maybe I'll start on the side that's already too dark in case I mess that up too. <laughs> it goes nothing. I think, 
think that's all I want. I'm not even gonna peek this time. Yes. Yep, that's, oh, that's what I was kind of looking for. But again, this side's too dark. So if I can repeat that on this side, then at least we'll have one side of the bait looks like what I envision. There we go. Yes. <laughs> so excited. That's what I wanted it to look like. Not, I mean, it don't look bad. I don't think a bass will mind, but a little bit more subtle stripes behind it. And again, you can do that in a different color too. Might be cool. Or don't use the stripes at all, or don't use the spots at all. What I'll do is I'll paint two more like this, one with and one without both stencils. That you guys can see. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of black up here on the eye. I think I'm going to be using a yellow colored eye, so I want that to stand off from the orange. So I'm gonna basically just spray black inside the eye socket, and that overspray will darken up right around where the eye is, and then ever so lightly darkening up the back of the bait as well. Spray just a little bit on the side here. Just like that, that's all I want. The same thing over here. There we go, darken back without it being a solid black. Okay, hair dryer, and let's glue in some eyes. I do love it whenever you get the colors just to play with each other like that. Not to go all Bob Ross here, but a little bit of gold orange color fading into the green. Looks pretty juicy. Uh, eyes, we're going to use, I think these will fit in there. Oh yeah, perfect. Going to get the eye ready on the tweezers first and then gonna put a little dab of glue and there we have it i would say that was a success so like i said at the beginning you guys let me know in the comments below uh, what kind of patterns or stencils or blanks, what is you're looking for? I need to make a new blank order here very soon. My blank supply is getting low. So let me know what you guys are interested in. Crankbaits, topwater, swimbaits, glidebaits, lipless, the list goes on. And then of course, what kind of stencils you guys like or you want to see me try to make. So if you comment that below, you'll be entered to win this one that I painted today, a couple of the blanks and the stencils since they did work out. Everything's linked in the description below. I'm going to put some clear coat on this and then uh, come back and take a look at what she looks like all finished up. Free one that you fall, girl.